a lot of you have been looking at ways to do monthly recurred revenue and different aspects like that. And one of the ways is starting to manage your customers, Wi-Fi, your customer switches, all that fun stuff. And instead of using a cloud key that you can only put that single site on that cloud key with Hostify, you can throw all your sites for all your customers on there, single pane of glass and everything's there. You don't have to worry about updating the controller. You don't have to worry about updating the server. All you have to worry about is managing the updates for the devices that you rolled out for your customers. Riley takes care of all that for you. And then the other biggest gripe that everybody has about Ubiquity is their support sucks. And Riley and his other support team member are there for you and they can help you with that support. Uh, he actually pulled his support guy from Ubiquity and now handles all the day-to-day -day support for all their customers. And it's been great. Um, I'm actually going to be moving my controller to Hostify in the next few weeks. And I know Marco this past week spun up a controller on Hostify and has been really happy with it. So I wanted to bring Riley in so you guys can learn more about it and see if there's an opportunity for you guys to start using it. Sweet. Yeah, appreciate it, Brandon. I think, no you know, just looking at everybody that's here, I, I'm pretty sure all of us have used Unify and or Ubiquity products in some capacity, including myself. And I'm a huge Ubiquity fan, so I'm really excited to to hear what Riley has to say. So, Riley, if you could, I mean, if you're ready to do some sort of, you know, introduction and maybe like a demo of uh, Hostify, I'm just going to kick it over to you and uh, just kind of roll from there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, definitely. Um, uh, stoked to tell you guys about Hostify and get to know about, you know, what kind of ubiquity installs you guys are doing. And, um, yeah, so let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, cool. So can everyone see my screen? Yep. That's good. Yep. Okay, cool. So, um, so yeah, we have, uh, we have, uh, 900 customers and they've connected over 50,000 ubiquity devices. Each of our customers gets their own server. It's um, it's uh, installed on a cloud server. So we use Vulture. If you guys have heard of them, they're similar to like AWS. They're a cloud infrastructure provider. So they provide the server. We have a program that automatically installs Unify, gives you um, login information in your dashboard. And so from there, we help you um, migrate um, all of your cloud keys or um, some of our customers are coming from like a laptop. There's all different levels of like ubiquity maturity as far as like how you're managing stuff. So like the worst case scenario is like you start installing stuff on a laptop and then as soon as you leave, you can no longer access it. And then, so then you learn like, maybe I should get a cloud key. So then, you know, we have some customers that have a, um, a bunch of cloud keys. And then at some point, usually they realize that managing a bunch of cloud keys is not very scalable. Once you get beyond a few sites, it becomes like really difficult to manage like how are you doing backups on each cloud key? How are you doing updates on each cloud key? What happens if the cloud key gets disconnected and you have to go on site and restore it? So, um, you know, if you just have uh, a home, if you just want to throw Ubiquity in at your house, I tell everyone, like, just get a cloud key. It's the easiest way to do it. But if you want to manage, you know, five different sites or 100 different locations, um, you really should look at having a single controller in the cloud, whether it's Hostify or not. You should install um, your own controller on the cloud and then um, have all your sites connecting up to the controller. And, um, yeah, Ubiquity is designed in such a way that it's, uh, it's capable of doing this securely. So um, the way the devices communicate um, and the way that you access the dashboard can all be done in a secure manner. And um, we also have guides on like how to do two factor um, for uh, your logins and stuff like that. Um, so it's, there, it's just, there's a safe way to do it. And then it's, it's a lot better because you just have one server to manage all your sites. You have one server to do updates, one server to do backups. So, um, and then going beyond that, um, like I said, you could, uh, this is the w recommended way of doing it. I'd say if you have more than like five sites, um, but if you want to use Hostify, you know, the, the added benefit is we manage those updates for you. We help you with support. We help you with even pre-sales, even though we don't sell the products, we'll, we'll happily tell you if you come to us and say like, you know, the client has this specification, which, which model, which device models should we, we should we get? And like, you know, we, we've seen so many deployments, we can help you like, you know, pick out what devices you need and stuff like that, even though we don't sell the hardware. So we just try to help as much as we can, whether it's a, a server issue or a device firmware bug or a configuration issue, or you need help, you know, understanding, you know, which device is best for this, which situation and stuff like that. So it's really uh, about the support. And then the updates is the other big component of what we do because, um, you know, in last year, Unify released uh, six stable releases of Unify came out in 2019. And so if you are managing your own server, that's six different times that you have to sit down and 
uh, figure out, you know, should I apply this update? Is it safe? Let me go read the forums for an hour and see all the different responses. And then maybe I should test it out on um, a smaller server. So, I mean, if you think that, you know, if each update, there's six updates that each of them take you like an hour to like, you know, <laughs> figure out, you know, I think that that kind of justifies the cost too, is that, you know, we take care of that for you. So, um, but yeah, so like looking at a little more about like how you connect your devices and stuff. I'm not sure if you want me to get into like how you do like the site migrations or like how you add devices, or, like what kind of questions you guys might have. I think I'll, I think I'll just open it up so I don't just ramble on, but um, I'll open it up to like different questions you guys might have about like how it works and stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, Brandon, did you have some questions? I know we had a little DM going back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I mean, were, if you want to show guys, because I know a lot use mostly cloud keys, show them how you can add multiple sites to the single controller. Yeah. So what's cool with uh, the un so the Unify software is uh, uh, free. And um, what when you install it on a cloud server, though, you're able to, it's very multi-tenant. So instead of logging into each cloud key like you're used to, you would log into one server, like demo.hostify.com is the name of this server, but you can actually, we can have it so you can customize it with your own name. And um, you have each of your customers are a site on that server. So to switch between customers, you switch between sites. So this is the Kensington site. Um, and then I can switch to the Dana site. And as I'm switching, um, the network settings are completely isolated. So if I go to wireless networks and I switch back to Kensington, the name of the network here is Dana, but if I switch to Kensington, it's it's going to be uh, green as the wireless network. So um, all the settings are completely isolated from each other. And then you can even create admin accounts that can only see certain sites. So if you want to have a, give a customer access, there's different permission levels. So you could give a customer read only access. You could give them access as an administrator to um, three out of five of your sites or like, you know, so if you have one customer has multiple locations, they can log in and they only see all their locations, but they don't see your other customer locations. So they've built it. So it's really nice and multi-tenant to, um, be able to split up permissions and in, in sites and stuff like that and keep everything secure and isolated, which is really cool. And then, um, talking about migration, how do you move off of a cloud key? Um, it's actually a lot, it's actually really easy. It's usually easier than people think. So um, pretend this is uh, the cloud key that you wanna move off of. If you go to settings site and then export site, it actually will trigger this migration wizard. So you download a um, site configuration file and then you type in the address of the new server to migrate the devices to. And then on the new server, you go to sites and you go to import site and you add that file and then all your configurations and your devices will reconnect. So. Um, yeah, so there's a migration wizard by Ubiquity to, to move from a cloud key to something like Hostify or your own server that's really easy to use. It only takes about two minutes to do move each of your cloud keys to a site on a single server. So There's also a question from, uh, from Ray Klein. Um, Ray, did you want to uh, jump in and ask that question, give a little more detail on that, about the patches and the updates? Yeah, that's fine. So, Riley, if, if you guys are managing the patches and the security updates, what if our clients wanted to manage that on their own and not do the updates as they come out? So, yeah, as part of our service, we do manage the updates. Right now, we don't have like an opt out process. But one thing I will say is that we don't do uh, we don't do firmware updates. So the updates that we do are not disruptive to our customers. We'll never cause your network to reboot or anything like that. Um, so as part of that, we don't handle the uh, firmware upgrades. It's up to you when you want to apply or if you want to apply a firmware update. We do um, automatically take care of Unify updates. So when there's a stable release, um, and on the screen here, I have an article with more information about how we handle it. But basically, when there's a new stable release, we wait at least a week. Um, we read the forums to see um, if anyone's complaining about issues with it. We begin testing on a few of our servers that are in production. And um, if testing goes well, usually within about two weeks, we'll update everyone um, to the latest stable release, the new one that came out. Um, and that process is non-disruptive, like I said. So the server will uh, install Linux and Unify updates, but we won't push out firmware updates. But you can um, configure on a per site basis. Um, there's actually a feature in Unify, a newer feature where you can configure automatic firmware updates under services, scheduled upgrades, uh, upgrades, and you can configure 
um, you know, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis uh, to configure updates on your devices automatically. So there's actually a question from Josh, and I could almost almost answer this myself. But he, he's wondering what's the benefit of a service like yours as opposed to just doing it hosting hosted for, uh, on your own servers. And, and yeah, for me, I, yeah, for me, I, I know that I would just much rather have somebody else manage everything and all the updates. Like I don't want to mess around with it. Sure. Yeah, it's cheaper if you um, if you want to do it on your own. It's uh, you know our service is fifty bucks a month. You can do this on your own for you know. 20, 30 bucks a month, whatever it is that your, your AWS, your digital ocean bill is. Um, so yeah, you can definitely do it cheaper on your own. Um, and I, like I said, I'd recommend like whether you use Hostify or not, this is the best way to do it. Once you have more than like five sites, you're going to, it's going to pay for itself with not having to buy a cloud key for every site and the time it'll save you not worrying about cloud keys. But, um, with our service, you know, we, we've just really got it dialed in where, um, you know, the update process is an important part of it, but really it's the support element of it. Um, when you're doing it on your own, your server crashes, this is a really critical server. It's got all your customers' networks on it and you're freaking out and you have nobody to call. I mean, luckily you guys have low voltage nation, Slack community and stuff, but with us, you know, you have somebody to call and we'll, we'll help you fix your server. And another thing is you have to really keep up on uh, updates, SSL certificate installation and renewals are kind of complicated on Unify. It's not your typical web SSL because you have to like import it into Unify's Java key store. And um, there's just a, there's just a lot of things that we've learned to like really fine tune the Mongo database. Once you get above about 100 devices on your own controller, there's certain uh, tweaks you have to make to to give Java more more RAM. And so there's little road bumps you're going to run into. But if you have a lot of time on your hands to uh, to learn about all that stuff, yeah, you can do it on your own. It'll be cheaper. Yeah, J Josh, did that answer that question? There may have been some more detail that we need to go into no not really so more more what i was just trying to ask was just as an example of us as we've got about 150 sites right now that we're managing That's on an intern we have an internal server uh that we manage those and then we just spun up unms this week to start looking at bringing our edge devices oh, cool. in so just trying to understand what would be, you know, the, the, the benefit to using, you know, to using you and your services versus us staying, staying the, you know, the same way that we've been for a long time. That's the question. Yeah. So it's really um, support and updates and, and stuff like that. So like, um, yeah, we provide the support, the updates. You've already got the server in place, but um, you know we have a, a offsite backup. So I don't know if you have offsite backups configured or like SSL certificate. Um, we take care of that, and then um, we do continuous update and update testing. So when a new update comes out, we test it out before we update your server. And um, and then in addition to that, just we have phone support, live chat. We'll do a screen share with you. And that's all across the board of any ubiquity device question, configuration issue, server issue. So, um, yeah, th it's really the support. And then, M Marco, uh, what was your question about support hours? You had yeah, so I was just curious, Riley. Um, I had sent in an, an email, um, you know, earlier either today or yesterday about, like, a change, for example. I wanted to use my own um, domain name. Oh, which cool. Yeah, I think I wrote you back today. Yes, which is not really a high priority, but say, for instance, yeah. something happened where, you know, on a Saturday, you know, we do have customers, for example, multi-tenant or, you know, everyone complains if they don't have Wi-Fi, you know, in their building. So if we have an issue, let's say, at Saturday at 8 o'clock at night, how does that work as far as support hours go? Is it, you know, I send an email out and we would get an answer kind um, of deal, or what would you, what do you typically do with that? So yeah, so we we work um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. We're a really small company, so it's just Safwan and I. And um, so yeah, our typical hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then you know if something urgent comes up, you know it's hit or miss if we're going to be available or not. Um, so with uh, with the servers though, we have we're managing over 900 servers, and so um, I've got it really fine tuned. So there's like um, alerts and escalations and like automatic scripts that fix things. So for example, if your server was overloaded and it crashed 
Um, I actually have a script that will detect that your server crashed, automatically reboot it. When it reboots, it'll actually log in, prune the database, take a um, take the support logs like the uh, var log, unify server logs, and the Mongo database log, and it'll take all this information with all your customer account information and everything to know about your server. Sends me an email so I can look at it to see if I need to jump into like take further action. So like your example with the Wi-Fi not working. Um, now that would be like that would be like. So there's like certain things that are like your responsibility. So like the devices and, you know, making the network, you know, making sure the configuration and make sure wireless is working. You know, that's kind of like your responsibility to make that work. We'll try to help you. Um, but like our responsibility is like, we want to make sure a server is never offline. So, um, you know, that's why we have the automated things in place. So, um, but yeah, you know, as we grow, we might have someone working on the weekends. But yeah, right now we don't have a, we don't have like guaranteed support hours outside of you know normal business hours, Eastern time zone, uh, Eastern U.S. So okay, so if something happens, then it's kind of like you know if it's outside of hours, it you know you may get a response or it may have to wait until you get back an hours kind of deal. Yeah, pretty much. But like I said, there shouldn't be anything that you need us for urgently after hours. Sure. Um, sure. Okay. So, yeah, I was just curious, you know, because it's again, it's rare that happens, but you know, for example, like obviously Meraki, a different mindset, a different model, um, you know, so different support time. So obviously expectations are where yes. they should be in, in place. And, um, you know, I'm kind of just getting back into ubiquity and, you know, starting with using hostify and I'm not pushing you, you know, and giving you props on it, but, I, but indirectly I am, you know, it, it was a very simple is instance to start up and, it kind of gives me peace of mind, especially with working with Brandon and uh, Ray and then, you know, everybody really getting back into ubiquity. So you just kind of cool. added to it and, and it's been, uh, it's been good this week. So I'm looking forward to the continued upward trend. Thanks. That's really great to hear that, um, that you considered ubiquity again, because I think what you're saying is because there's some support to, uh, you know, even if it's not Meraki level support, you know, like I said, we're a small business, but you know, Right. You know, as we can. Yeah. Absolutely. At least there's a little security net, if you will. You know, even if it happens yeah. on a Saturday or Sunday, it's like, all right, I can wait till Monday and we can dig into it from there. And if there is an urgent issue, um, call, call to escalate it. Cause I'll, okay. I'll check an email a few times on the weekend, but I'm trying, you know, just like you guys, I'm trying not to work every weekend. Sure. So. Of course. Yeah, you, you deserve <laughs> you your call. personal time. I get it. <laughs> you call and it is really urgent. You will get a hold of me quickly. So. Don't tell everybody that, but <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So, maybe you guys want to talk about Unimets a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, real quick, I just want to elaborate upon something that Mason mentioned about. Can, can you give some more detail, Mason, about your droplet server that you've had for for three years? Like, what is? Yeah. Oh, cool. Can Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all right. Okay, I'll, I'll go on my. Uh, well, let me go on my phone here. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's better. Um, I've been. I had a droplet server. We spun up about three years ago. Um, it costs about fifteen bucks a month, and we uh, we mm -hmm. have Linux running on it. Um, it takes a snapshot. Uh, I believe every three days. Um, we then we have auto backups on Unify, and Perfect. I've just I've never had an issue with it. Um, <clears throat> and you know the updates, I'll. I'll usually, if I see that Unify has rolled an update out, by the time I see an, another stable update, it's already been about a week or so. Um, and, you know, I'll usually roll it out. I can, you know, I'll roll the update out, but then I'll just upgrade a few devices at the shop. And then uh, usually um, we have it to auto update once a month. So if we're having issues, then I'll, I'll wait on it. But I don't know. I've just never really had an issue. We pay 15 bucks a month for it. And we have, man, we got to probably have over 200 devices running on it. Um, oh, cool. Haven't had any issues with it. So I just want to throw there my thoughts. Mano Hostify is $500. I mean, not 500 sorry, 50 bucks a month. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, not to say that's not worth it, but just kind of thinking about it and what you're saying. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um... Cool. Yeah. It sounds like you're, you know, you're set, like you don't run into any issues. Did you, uh, did you make any changes to like the Mongo settings to get up to 200 devices on it? No, I, I haven't, I haven't did made it? any settings. I haven't made any changes to that. I didn't, 
I also was not aware that I would need to do anything like okay, that. Okay, well, so. if, you, if you haven't needed to, then you don't need to. But um, but yeah, you I could send you the article on like how to do the high device uh tuning KB article basically. Um, now that you would you would know if you had an issue. So I'm assuming you know you must not have any issues with it, but you might need to ch change it at some point. But um, but yeah, with that, usually like the the thing you'll run into is devices start saying that they connected, but they never disconnected. So like you start missing heartbeats because it can't process all the heartbeats of the devices checking in fast enough. Um, yes. so, so if you do run into that, just let me know. I'll send you that article and, um, you know, try to help you fix it. Yeah. Have you ever had any problems with Mongo database blowing up or anything like that? No, no. And that's the thing. Oh, okay. We had that problem with cloud keys. Um, right, yeah. When I first started that. And then I followed a, a, thing online how to set up it on droplet and i ran it for about a month with just two sites i'm like oh this is great this is the way yeah, yeah. to do it and then cool. i just i did that remotely i just made sure cloud keys were up and then i exported them and and moved them over and we never had an issue since we have you know a lot of different users on there we give different people at a company permissions to their own you know site cool and, that, and then you've got problem. you've got auto backups doing did you say once every other day you're doing um, backup I, so for the unified backup. stuff, it does a backup every every day, and then it'll do a, a like a full data backup every seven days, and then we do a snapshot on the droplet server every three days, I believe. It's been such okay. a long time since I've looked at it, but yeah, that's, as long as you have a strategy in place, um, you know, th because uh, so I I've uh, spun up over a thousand unified controllers in the last two years, and uh, I think about seven of them had hardware failures. So you, you never expect it. Um, and it never happened to me before I had a cloud company with a thousand servers to get that, you know, to get up there with the numbers to actually have this happen to me. But um, Vulture lost seven of our servers where the hardware failed and there were no backups. And so, oh, wow. so we actually, luckily um, we have offsite backups. You know, we weren't enabling the snapshots. We actually have our own script that logs in, takes a backup of Unify, stores on DigitalOcean spaces. So luckily we were able to restore for those servers, but yeah, you just kind of like, like before this happened to me, I just always assumed that like dig they're DigitalOcean or whatever, they're never going to lose a server. But apparently it's pretty common that like one, one in a, or like five in a thousand servers are going to have a hardware failure, even in the cloud. So yeah, so, but you having those back of those snapshots, that's going to be, that's going to be good. That's what's going to save you if you ever do have a hardware failure, which you might not. So, um, okay. but yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it sounds like you're all set. I mean, if you ever run into any problems, just you know, feel free to hit me up because I've seen a lot of shit. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it sounds like you're all good. I mean, I think that if we were to get to the point where you know we have so many devices that we keep running into issues, then I would say we would you know move over. But as of right yeah. now, with where I'm sitting at fifteen dollars a month, it, I don't see I don't see a big enough of a benefit to move over for fifty bucks a month because everything's running smoothly. Um, you know, that, that could change in a year if we add a bunch more devices, then all of a sudden we're getting heartbeat issues and a bunch of other random miscellaneous problems. But um, I just wanted to throw that out there, not to say that your product's overpriced or anything of that nature. I'm just, I was just kind of throwing out my experience with everything and just give people another perspective. So, yeah, definitely. Like, I, like I said already, like, I'll be the first to tell you guys that, you know, there's cheaper ways to do it, but you know, if you, if you just want it done for you and you know, we manage it, you know, and do you have a experience working with Linux in the past or like, yeah. would you say you're pretty good with Linux? Yeah, I, I'm fairly good with it. We had, we had about 30 computers deployed with Unify video running Linux and that oh, was cool. a nightmare and a half. So I, I <laughs> yeah, about... maybe not. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, for certain people, like if you're good with Linux, you're comfortable doing all this stuff. Like, you know, you, you don't never have any, you never have to get any help with Ubiquity stuff. You never have any questions for like Ubiquity support really. And you just, you know what you're doing. Like, you know, that's, uh, you know, probably, probably set and <laughs> just do it yourself. It's cheaper. Yeah. But a yeah. lot of my a lot of people, like uh, they, a lot of my customers, they don't, they don't, they're not real familiar with Linux or some of them, they are real familiar with Linux, but it's just one less thing to worry about. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's cool though. Sounds like you're set. So, uh, Raymond Karam, did you have some uh, some questions around like pricing, or you had some other, you had some stuff that you put in Slack? Did you want to? No, I had, yeah. that? Brandon. Brandon posted the pricing and stuff. I saw it, and it, and it, I don't know if I've, I've just come across it, um, uh, Riley. I, I've never used it, is, but it's pretty much your services. Is it like a company called Hubbox? Similar? Oh no. 
Hostify. No? no, no, I know. No, I know yours is Hostify. I'm saying, is it similar? I've, I've just throughout oh. the. Oh yeah. yeah. So, they, um, so we, we're the only company that's doing this that has two full-time employees. Um, now that guy, he's an investment banker and he, his brother is the owner of uh Beambox. And so he kind of saw that what I was doing with host fire, whatever, and start his own thing. And so, um, yeah, there's a competitor called uh Hubox that does it cheaper, but you know, I think you get what you pay for, you know, it's part-time um, on the website says no support, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, there, uh, there's probably like a dozen other um, providers uh, that have jumped on the bandwagon. So yeah, no, the, the good thing about our community that I've come to realize is, I mean, a lot of us that do this day in and day out in different trades is you get what you pay for, right? Whether it's yeah. a support thing or it's a quality thing, I just wanted to throw it out there because sometimes um we come across some things and we're not aware like i'm more of a security integrator but i'm trying to dab into networking because that's where i started several years ago and it's like sometimes you get lost you come across something like that it sounds better sometimes we look at pricing but it's good to know the difference so yeah um all the other um providers are uh like part-time like i said there's you know there's some guys that are in uh you know that are, they have a job as like a software engineer and then they started this thing as they saw you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say they all saw that I was making money doing it or whatever, but I know specifically several of them personally reached out to me, asked exactly how I did every little thing, then copied it. And then there's one, web, there's what like one of them actually took my testimonials from my real customers and claimed them as his own on his own website. So yeah, it's kind of cutthroat, you know, like I was surprised all these people, I don't know where the hell they come from, but they spin up these websites and they think it's easy to do. And so whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of them. Um, uh, yeah, it is. He has a cheaper thing, but if you look on his pricing, it says like seven days of support. And so I don't know what that means. Like if you have a question after that, you like, if you got to pay or it's just like figured out on your own or what, but yeah, there's a lot of different, uh, um, websites like that one. No, awesome. Do you know anyone using a service? No. One time I was just, uh, when I, I've started in the past year, I've, I've done a, like a handful of uh, ubiquity stuff. And I cool. just Google searched and I came across these guys. I was like, what is this? You know, it sounds interesting. Yeah. But I wanted to sign up. So I just yeah, thought. Yeah, some of them are even bidding on my keyword. So like when you Google Hostify, there's like competitor ads now that like they're trying to get customers off of people Googling Hostify. It's like, geez. Wow. But, but yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're out there. Yeah, I do that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Riley. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Yeah. Did you want Chris, to go here, I got some... a quick question for you, Riley? You might... Oh yeah. Go ahead, Chris. You might have already covered this, but um, do you have hosting yet or whatnot for UNMS um, as well as Unify or no? Yeah, we do. So we've been doing it since the beginning. Like we, we actually, I started doing UNMS hosting before Ubiquity even did UNMS hosting. Like it went back when it was in beta, and it used to be two different products. It used to be UCRM was like its own server, and we did UCRM hosting, and then UNMS was its own server. And then they created UNMS version one, which combined both the servers. And um, it's a small part of our business, to be honest. It's like we have like 800 customers that are Unify and like 100 that are UNMS. And I'm actually about to push out an update tomorrow to uh, update everyone's servers to 1.1.7, which is the latest UNMS release. But um, yeah, we have a we have about 100 customers, like I said. And but I'd say like. I don't really know for sure, but like half of them or something are like uh, wireless internet service providers. And then the other half are like, uh, you know, installers, like IT service providers, like you guys that, um, you know, you have like some edge routers, some point to point nano station locos. And then, like I said, the other half of my customers, they've got like, uh, some of them are using UCRM. They've got like wireless, um, you know, towers that are pointing down to, uh, you know, these these point to point connections, point to multi point connections for um, people paying them for internet service. And so some of them are actually using UCRM to build their customers, do their ticketing. And um, so it's a big part of their business. But um, but yeah, so we've been doing that. We still do it actually as well alongside the Unify hosting, so. Perfect, perfect. I might have to chat with you later on that because I know right now we're not, we don't have any of our UNMS stuff on a uh, centralized controller. Our, our Unify stuff obviously is, as we've discussed before, but uh, the UNMS stuff, I don't. And so that's oh, uh, cool. good, to, good to know. So thanks. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, UNMS is great. Um, 
you know, for managing, like you can manage, like, uh, I was actually just going to do a demo of it. Um, you can manage like the firmware, um, uh, like you can do firmware updates, the devices back up to the server. You can do some configurations on them and, um, a bunch of different stuff. So yeah, it's really useful. Um, and they're just adding more and more features to it. It's pretty cool. So Riley, uh, Marco here again. Um, I was just talking in the Slack channel with, uh, with Brandon and whatnot. If Unif, um, well, if ubiquity kills UNMS, we lose access to it completely, right? Do they get warning in? And if they don't, we obviously would lose access to all our products. We don't have to re associate them with UNMS. <laughs> now, are you talking about UNMS free, the free thing yes. they're offering? Yeah. Okay. So like I wrote an, uh, blog post about like the free version and like some of its limitations, but yeah, like potentially what the problem is, um, is like, you can't control the DNS. The devices are connecting to you. You have to use their DNS as far as I know, unless they change that. So like with Hostify, like one thing I like telling our customers is like, if we like disappear tomorrow and like we turn off everyone's servers, um, you know, we have plans in place where like, as long as you have a backup and as long as you have, which we can set up auto backups to your Dropbox or Google drive or whatnot. So as long as you have your recent backup and you have, um, control of your DN your, your devices with your own DNS name. So you can set up your own DNS name at Hostify, like, um, you know, like unify.yoursite.com or unms.yoursite.com. So with those two things, all you need is a backup and control of your devices via DNS. And you can, um, you, you can, you can spin up a new server, restore from backup, point your DNS to the new server. So even if we just like disappeared tomorrow, you'd still have control of your stuff with ubiquity. I don't think that's the case unless they changed it. You, you can't use your own, um, you can't use your own domain name. So like potentially if they like force an upgrade on everyone, you're kind of like at their will, like, I'm not sure if like how you would migrate away. I'm sure they wouldn't do that though. Like you would have a chance to migrate away. The main reason yeah. I would use like the free plan is just like support. Once again, like if you just have like 10 devices you want to throw on there, it's, you know, and you don't really need care about support, whatever, it's fine. Like some of our customers, like the, the UNMS server is like their entire business, you know, like the, the wireless internet service providers, like, you know, their whole business runs on it. They're, they're billing their devices. And so, you know, 50 bucks a month for them is like no big deal. But you know, if it is, if 50 bucks a month isn't worth it, like, you know, just use a free plan. It's not a big deal. But like, there are some issues for sure. Like I put in here, like you can't get SSH access. If you need to upgrade your, upgrade your server, you can't do that. Um, you can't change your server location. We can change your location. Um, probably doesn't matter if in the U S uh, offsite backups. I think that's a big deal that they don't provide offsite backups. So like what happens if they lose your container or like lose your server? I don't know what happens. I don't know if they keep backups or not. They're not real clear about that. So, um, right, and and that would of course be a concern of mine. You know, you know, like you're saying, you got a lot of Wisp that use it, and you know, there's a couple guys in the Midwest that I know of that are very big um, Wisp providers. So I would hope they wouldn't kill it, especially without warning. So I guess that's just my question. You know, I mean, we do have a lot of edge switches that are out there, and you know, as of this week, I'm finally readopting them into UNMS, but. You know, if let's say they they decide to change their model or whatever they decide to do, if you're let's say for example me, right, I'm on board with Hostify. If I already have um, the, I, I guess let's say the Unify network already with you, if I added UNMS, would there be some type of package setup that we can make? And I'm not putting you in hot seat by any means, but you know, if you have UNMS and you have Unify yeah. and you know 100 bucks or you know maybe you could do something where it's like 75. I don't know. I'm just just thinking out outside the box, you know. Yeah, no, we do have a lot of customers using both servers. Like I said, it it kind of puts us in a bad spot with the IT service providers. Like obviously, like uh, with the with the wireless internet service providers, it's like 50 bucks a month, whatever. Like our entire business and all of our recurring revenue rely on this thing working. So like for the, for those customers, it's like, they don't care. It could be 50 bucks, it could be a hundred bucks. Like, I don't really think they care, but with the IT service provider, it kind of sucks. Cause like, you're like, all right, another 50 bucks a month. I only need it for like 10 devices for the, these few edge routers or like these few like point to point connections. It's not really worth 50 bucks a month. So I'm kind of, I'm like, I hear, I hear it, but I hear like, I hear your concern with that, but we don't have any discount, unfortunately. So, I mean, if you're good with the free plan and you're can take some of the risk of it, I would just say like, you know, make sure you back it up to your own like computer every once in a while or something. But I mean, it's, I think it's kind of a bummer. You can't use your own domain name. That's really lame. 
but right. um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any discount though to answer your okay. question. No, that's um, that's you know, it's fair. It's uh, just something I was thinking of. And then, like you yeah, were saying, we sense. could do a backup on Unify and dump it to like Google Drive. So, yeah. so is that something we would just do automatically through you, or would that something we'd have to set up? you know, directly, you know, with, within the support channel to do it. So like I have an article here, we, we use our clone. And like I said, you're, you're able to get SSH access to your server at hostify. And so there's this really cool thing called our clone. And this is a guide showing you how to do unify backups to Dropbox, but you can also do use our clone to back up to FTP, Google drive, OneDrive, all these different providers. So, um, uh, it's a command line tool and, um, yeah, these are all the different providers of support. So basically all you do is it's a command line tool. You tell it, this is the directory the Unify backups are in. You set your Unify backups. Well, we're talking about Unimass. So set your Unimass backups to do daily backups. And then you set this to copy that directory where the backups get dropped to go to any of these providers you want. So like I said, you, all the common ones are here that you can think of Dropbox and DigitalOcean Spaces and S3 and Backblaze. So um, yeah, it's really cool. And then, the, like I said, then you have full control of your backups. You have full control of your DNS. So you don't even need us. Like um, if anything happened, you could restore to DigitalOcean or whatever, a different provider. And, um, you know, so that's a good thing. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Say, Riley, it's Ray. Again. So what do you got coming down to Pike for us? Anything new? Anything exciting? Yeah, actually. So like. Um, this, this year has been, uh, just really building a lot. And so I've got a new website we've been working on. We're actually like $25,000 into building a new website right now. We got some really talented, um, uh, web development agency and, um, what it's going to allow us to do is like create more products and stuff. And, um, and it's just going to be a lot better. Um, the new website, uh, this is kind of what it looks like here. And so you're going to be able to have like um, teams and you're going to be able to invite people to your team. And um, so you can share like, for example, sometimes you want like to have your, so you say you have a big customer that has like a hundred devices by themselves and you want them to have their own server. Maybe they're even going to pay for it. So it's up to you whether or not, but like it just gives a lot of optionality where you can have like a, a unified server. You're, you, you're in a team with your customer, but they're the billing owner. So they have the credit card on file. And so there's all these different options. But I mean, as an MSP, you should probably just be billing them separately. But, you know, say you want to invite your team members, um, you can invite other technicians to your team and they can log in and they'll be able to click buttons to like reboot the server or do different things. This is all, all under construction, so it's not finished yet. But um but that's what's coming down the pipeline. And um, yeah, I think the future for Hostify is just doing more of like this type of thing where like, you know, you know, uh, managed service providers, IT service providers are like, um, you know, the people that we care about. And so like whatever you guys are currently hosting, like let me know. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about like what what's the next thing that we're going to manage support backups updates for. Um, and it might be it might be a open source phone systems. It might be another network controller. Um, it might be, yeah. So there's a few different ideas I have about, you know, what our next products are going to be and stuff, but yeah, the same type of model. Uh, I'm going to take over because Blake might be having a tornado coming his way. Don't oh, know wow. for sure. Not again. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, no, it was great having you on. I really appreciate you spending the time with us on a Sunday. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? I got one quick one. Um, do you guys currently provide support for or an additional add-on for creating uh, Wi-Fi splash pages? It's something that's not that difficult to do, but honestly, I also just prefer not to have to mess with it. Do you guys do that at all or, or have any plans to? Yeah, good question. So, um, yeah, so there's the built-in splash pages in, in um, and Unify, but um, they're very basic. So you can, uh, you can enable like uh, terms of service where your customer can agree to a terms of service and click connect. Um, but a lot of our customers want something more advanced than that. They want to be able to collect an email address or a phone number um, before they allow the customer to connect for marketing purposes so that later they know these people were here and so then they can market to them and, and stuff like that. So um, for that, there's a lot of different providers and um, we integrate with 
anything that integrates with Unify. Um, let me take a look. I actually have a spreadsheet of. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here, but I have a spreadsheet of all the different uh, providers that we integrate with and we don't have our own service, um, but it's something I'm thinking about actually uh, because I get asked a lot, but um, here's the list of portal providers here. I'm put up on the screen. Uh, Beambox, Blackbox, Start Hotspot, Social Wi-Fi. There's just, there's all these different ones. And so they, they focus on different niches and different industries. So you might have one that focus on, uh, one that focuses on restaurants so that like after you uh, two hours after you logged into Wi-Fi, it sends you like a follow up survey about how your experience was. There's some that focus on hotels and some that focus on like the hotspot capabilities, which also there are hotspot capabilities built into Unify where you can actually um, accept payment for Wi-Fi access and stuff like that. So some build on those and some are like iron Wi-Fi, I think is actually more like an enterprise thing where you're, you're connecting uh enterprise users to Wi-Fi. And so, um, yeah, there's all different types of uh, providers. And we have a, our, our customers are using um, a lot of these uh, different providers and we can help you um, get it connected as well. And that's where the cloud server really um, shines too is because uh, you can have that SSL certificate and stuff like that. Um, it, it just works better. Trying to install an SSL on a cloud key is even more difficult. So, Awesome, thanks Riley. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so if everybody's good, we can end this a little early on a, a nice warm Sunday. Uh, where yeah. can everybody find you at, Riley? Um, yeah, you guys can find me. Um, I'm pretty easy to reach. Um, LinkedIn, uh, Riley Chase, Twitter, um, or just live chat on hostify.net too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good weekend, every guys. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Guys. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Have a good one.